Of course, interesting now, they don't do what we do, the extreme part. They don't, so, so there's a big difference. If you want to do it extreme, you have to plan it out. It takes like so long and you have to get everything organized. Uh, it starts with a, a, a design that's basically modular. So you can assemble things rapidly into place and individual mm -hmm. teams build the modules. We actually built all those modules in a workshop and we put them up in the site and assemble them rapidly. So that's the way it works. And it's completely different than a thing like, like Habitat for Humanity, where it's kind of like standard construction. So the only other model that I know that does this, and they actually do a standard way with professionals, because we actually don't require skilled people. We teach them on the spot. But the deal is there's a thing called church in a day. 200 people. Now, this is a little Bible thumping here. So, uh, uh, yeah. you know, you got the religious component there. Uh, so people are motivated for their house of worship kind of deal. But 200 people, 24 hours, and they put up a whole church. Now, they yeah. do that like maybe once or twice a year. But that's another model that's like the closest to what we do. But they don't use the, like the modular construction like we do, like panelized and... Uh, everything is like pretty much panelized. They do kind of like s standard stuff and also include a lot of professionals in there. So they've got all the crews working at the same time. I guess what I'm just looking at is when I when, when people are trying. I don't, when I was thinking about Habitat for Humanity, do they have um, uh, whoever's got a community where you could say we want to be able to build this thing, we want to be able to build permanent housing, we want to be able to have the community. You know, I'm wondering. There's that playground company that was based up in Ithaca, New York, uh -huh. where people would go in and they would do the planning, but they would then the whole community would come together over a weekend and build the playground. Okay. That may be a good model. Yeah, I'm just thinking about models that we have communities where people are wanting to do that, that you could say, okay, do you want to do you want to be a building house for people in your community? Like, what does what where you already have your build and your install base? It would be a large one and a good geographical one, so you could do that. Now, when you say you're building this. Um, in the workshop, can you ship it from there? Could you do it on, on, on the spot kind of a workshop? Or does it have to be, does all of the modular work have to be in the um, uh, in your space only? And the question is, so the, the real question there is labor. Because what we're finding out that instead of paying people to, to, hiring people to build housing, people can pay us in the form of an immersion workshop experience. So there's Got that you. part. So so we get the huge crew of people, and they provide the labor to do it, and they learn a lot during during that. So that's the model where it's about um, kind of turning around, like flipping the labor model, like flipping the classroom model, um, mm -hmm. where the people are learning, but they're actually building something really tangible. So it's social production. So the number of people that's the part. Otherwise, you'd be pay the economic model would be revenue model would be different if you're paying for the. Uh, all the professionals to do that. Now that could be doable, but that kind of becomes more of a standard model. Whereas for us, our core mission is is to reskill people and give them that those tangible skills that are badly missing in society. And that's kind of like how we market it as okay, get some real hands-on experience, and that it definitely sells. I mean, people are quite interested in that an experience economy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there was an interesting group. Yeah. Um, it's called the Shelter Institute. Are you familiar yeah. with that? Uh, you I are the Shelter Institute, yeah. Because mm -hmm, they're based up in Maine, and actually, you know, people have done that, and it's an interesting. Yeah, it's like a week long immersive class, and they do um, that. That feels like it. You know what I'm wondering, too, is if you, um, if you looked at, um, what was I going to say? Um, if you looked at something like Steve Case's. Uh, um, investment group that's trying to go into the Midwest and trying to go to different places to to build out um, uh, in, investment. Sort of. Let me just see what the name of his thing is called. Like Case Furniture, or what, what's that? No, Steve Case was the founder of AOL, um, and he's got a a group, and it is called. Hang on, just a minute. Uh, what is this group called? It was all about jobs and things like that. So he had another um, up global. Maybe it was up global. It's acquired by Techstars. That's interesting. Is it Revolution? He's got something that was about venture capital, the third wave. Um, so to building Silicon Valley outside the valley. So he was mm. looking to do a rise of the rest. So it is called. Mm. I'm going to send this to you because it feels to me like this could be. An interesting situation. Let me just see 
It's a case foundation. Mm -hmm. Rise of the rest. Yeah. Um, uh, Rise of the rest seed fund is from Revolution. So this is a, basically they're doing tours through other parts of the country away from Silicon Valley, that kind of stuff. So, um, um, and this idea is that looking at, at um, I'll send you this. Mm -hmm. There's um, the, this, you know the chat box on the left-hand side, if you want to just paste it in there, bottom, yeah, bottom that's left. Yeah, that's what I'm going to look for. Great. Okay. Let me see where we are. Chat box on the left. Yeah, Spray it will series. pop up bottom left if you scroll over. Open, close chat right here. Perfect. Okay, good. Oh, to enter a nickname in the box. Do I have to enter a nickname or can I just enter this? Yeah, just sunny. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, it feels to me like like getting somebody who's really focused on doing um, investment in the rest of the country in some of these places that, you know, this is a really interesting community building tool as with upskills building, which is an interesting idea to play with it, that that and you could go and do this pretty much anything. You could take your team to run this, right? They don't have to come to you. Do you go to them? Is that possible or no? Yeah. Yeah. Are you taking, our, taking the events, you're saying taking the events to there? Or you're, are you saying what does that happen here versus elsewhere? Yeah. It, it feels like if you could if you meet people where they are and go there, that might yeah. be an interesting place to Absolutely. To, um, yeah, that feels like a like a good idea. People are saying, "Oh, yeah, it's fine. We come to you." But like, how do we actually make yeah. this happen where yeah. we are? And I think, so, for twenty nineteen, I'm looking at so so we built this 20, 2016 build, which you saw in the pictures. And Katharina, like, it was actually very hard for Katharina because it's like she's out here in the Midwest, kind of like a, it's kind of lonely in the middle of nowhere. Um, so she yeah. and she's been doing a lot of finishing work over 2017, but we're, we're really stabilizing for next year. I'm looking at four builds, but now with not stick frame like yeah. Katarina's doing, but more like a compressed earth block. Which remember we have the compressed earth block machine, yes. which is kind of two tractors, big machines. So we're looking at building. So definitely one house in the Utah. We're negotiating that currently, and then after that, if that works, I mean just replicate it. You know, do like three more. So that'll be October, and then November, December, January, like go to the southern states or whatever. But I, I'm I'm looking at it. we gotta really nail it to to the replicability point where it's like it's not an epic event, but something we can do on demand and as a regular business model. Yeah, that sounds good. Also, be interesting to look at places like I was just thinking I was in um, Mexico over the Thanksgiving holidays and. There's a really interesting area that's um, that's in Mexico City proper, but it um, it has it's um, uh, all of these sort of it's kind of like landfill, but it's not. They've, they've done um, it's for farming, and it's around all of these uh, these rivers. So the whole of Mexico City is built on top of these, which is why Mexico City is so green. It's not so dry, but it's so green, and um, and and seeing this, there are a bunch of rammed earth structures because you couldn't have permanent structures and then you could do them your structures makes you think about different places where people are trying to do temporary housing or trying to do temporary enough housing which is a temporary maybe 10 or 15 years housing as opposed to maybe when people are thinking i'm going to build this to last for 100 years mm -hmm. but i'm just wondering if there's particularly in some parts in the developing world where you know they got real issues around around housing for transient communities and what that might look like but yeah yeah definitely um you know possibilities um so just to kind of like feed you in into like the the kind of struggle we have so over the years we've been doing a lot of prototyping and we never really buckled down okay here's a product release and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, but that we were able to bootstrap that but it's at minimal funding you know just just to keep us going um, yeah. so that gives us the full freedom to do what, exactly what we need and then there's the <laughs> other side um, so two sides, that kind of, kind of the education bootstrapping model where the revenue from the workshops pays for the materials and pays for everything else. Now the second aspect would be going more heavy into production and as soon as we develop a workable revenue model then just really get focused on that, try to scale that as opposed to um, kind of like the education model. So it's kind of like the education versus production model uh, where where the dilemma is if we get into the production more of the production model still using the extreme manufacturing methods 
but I guess the psychological resistance for me, it's like, wow, to develop one thing to the very end, it just takes a long time. That's, I think that's yeah. probably the bottom line. And I guess that's where, like, at this point, I'm saying, okay, um, just let's just reevaluate the investment thing. And the latest thing on investment, I'm thinking, okay, so the, the end goal for Katrina and my, myself, where we met at TED Global, we said, yeah, let's do this open, world-class research center for open source development. You know, and I think the way that can be rolled out is through a university like setting where a university is pretty close to like a real village because you can have education, you can have production there, you can have agriculture, you can have energy, housing. So it's like a little village. And we t still, you know, we talk about the global village construction set. So, so the latest in my my bag was, OK, how about if we look for some investment and we start a first serious one year program? 25k a pop for students and we're really taking people either like in leap year or like alternative to real college right and you learn and you have the opportunity to actually be hired making 3d printers making heavy equipment building houses so basically like this very hands-on physical production kind of a curriculum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but a university basically and but the question there is okay can we fund it because the advantage is that, wow, we've got some of the machines, we've got this amazing crowd build capacity, so that could be leveraged in this whole process to do this, to start up a, a real campus, like at really, really low cost, like a million bucks, you know, get a decent facility at that kind of level. So it's kind of, we've been toying with that, because the dilemma is, okay, let's take all these products to the end so they can be revenue generating, um, but we need some seed money to yeah to get this further you know just to accelerate the process so that's that's kind of where we are right yeah. i guess the thing i mean you know uh the thing i don't know is is there any are there any either universities or are there any um educational institutions that are really focused on making and on production and particularly ones that also have like an agricultural school or that have a you know it feels to me like that's a thing you need to look at because um, where they're, they're, they're focused on that piece so that you could see if you could slip right in and do something from that setting. Because, you know, I, that, that's an issue. You, you, you might look at Arizona University, ASU, I think is one of the most um, progressive schools in the country. It's not the most progressive school. It's outside of Tucson. So mm -hmm. you might look and see what kind of building and production they do. You know, and if so, I'm happy to make some introductions there. Um, obviously, the University of Missouri might be an interesting place to look and see, you know, if, they're, if there's anyone trying to do a kind of a curriculum like this because I think that that you know even if you were able to do you know it, it gives you some legitimacy if you can actually show that you can do it for a, um, an existing educational institution um, because I don't know what the demand is and that's hard you know, like one since we're talking about a private piece you have to look at places like the Shelter Institute which is saying okay we should, we should teach you how to do this and there's a community element to it or that playground sort of build I'll, I'll look at that playground thing if I can see that I can find it um, um, because otherwise, you're telling we think we've got something, but we haven't been able to demonstrate a um, um, a demand for it, and that's what many people in invest is going to be looking for a demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that um, that's a tricky. Yeah. It's and right tricky. now, so so as far as the the revenue model. For what we want to do, so so the three D printer that we have, I'm really tr trying to put some decent time into. So what we've d done is right now starting to run regular workshops, where a number of people show up at three hundred dollars above the bill of materials cost. So like twelve people is thirty six hundred dollars. Doing that plus selling kits of the three D mm -hmm. printer, so that's one thing we're really starting on in a really serious way. Like okay, hundred percent finished product because if we do that, that also applies to all the other products that we that we have uh, so that's one thing where we're trying to take that more or less to completion as a as a real viable business model there uh, mm -hmm. so yeah to to bootstrap fund further so at the same time okay we're gonna go more ambitious with okay here's the plan for the the campus but at the same time let's show how these uh, products can really work in the marketplace yeah, I guess the thing I have to look at is, you know, there's so many people who are sort of doing interesting kind of hackathons or maker spaces and sort of looking at the combination of maker spaces and areas where they could really use uh, something that's community building might be an interesting way to go. I, I understand what you're trying to do, so I'm trying to think about how 
how you put the pieces together so you've got sort of a limited risk on your side with some possible reward and you can do it without having to you know spend six months or a ton of money to be able to do it like what are the potential partners to work with I feel like that would be an interesting idea which is to say you know if everybody's looking at um, and who's actually doing sort of maker um, hackathons they sort of maker either either in a um, in a home building situation or community where they need to be building homes or some group that's specifically looking at development in a particular part of the world or a particular part of the community to have you come in and do that kind of workshop. That's an interesting idea. Um, and I'm wondering if it's like sort of the community, whether it's the opportunity zone or it's some kind of community development concept where, um, you know, can, so if I were from ACORN, which is the organization that helps people with um, uh, sort of low, low interest for homes in, 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 in difficult areas, so it's nice from a sort of mortgage perspective. Um, ACORN? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's what, I think that's what ACORN does. I'm just, I'm just trying to think about places that are, um, I'm, not, I'm just not sure. Hang on a second. Acorn first time home buyer program. That's one of those associated community organizations for reform now. I was for social justice and stronger communities. I'm just I'm just trying to think about um Is that the I, correct organization? Yeah, Acorn? that's the right organization, acorn.org. Yeah. And so looking at are there any places, because I could get a if you can talk to me about being able to do something um, uh, when you've got, when they've already determined to need this organization around them that's uh -huh. working on serving that need, just to me, like there's something, something there that makes it easier if you say, okay, got it. we have a partnership with this group and they're working from a community development perspective and we're going to be, you know, partnering with them, show them you know, how to build homes and then we can do a couple of kit homes with them or something. You know, it just mm -hmm. feels like it gives you legitimacy because you're, you're still bootstrapping. And so yeah. how do you get out of bootstrapping mode and how do you do that without having to raise a bunch of money that, um, you know, that's going to that's gonna be as hard as it is to bootstrap. So, so sort of looking at what kinds of partners give you what kind of legitimacy and if that's valuable. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So partnerships are you would suggest as the main thing serving need that already is identified, and we can plug into that. Well, you have to because otherwise yeah. you're just saying you think there's a need, and there's no way unless you can demonstrate. See, part of your piece is going to say we're trying to do something that's new, and if you said we've got a solution to a problem, um, mm -hmm. strong communities. Be, being able to build a home for people, being able to, if you had this community and said, okay, everybody's going to commit to, you know, twice a year or five, five times a year, and we'll be able to build these homes until over the next five years, we'll be able to build 25 or 35 or 40 homes in a community. And what would that mean to people? I mean, I'm just, it just, it feels to me like you've got to identify like which people are doing so community organizing and activism and about, and about home housing and shelter. And is that possible? Mm -hmm. Would that become more interesting as opposed to you saying, you know, we're incumbent to you. I, mean, I, I don't know. It just feels like there's, there have to be partners that you can do this with so you can, you can leverage people's community organizing what they've done. Um, and the identifying a problem who say you've identified housing and, you know, under engaged community. Um, and we've got two people who've got a way to engage the community and got a way to build a house. Yeah. So that sounds like, because the other option is, okay, we go at it somehow where we develop, okay, the, just in the, I mean, basically saying independently versus with somebody who essentially is providing an audience and infrastructure around that. So I mean, I think that makes perfect sense, right? I think you've got to do something like that because, because otherwise you're still, where you're, you're in that same place. Yeah. That, um, which is that, that you're, you're in a place where, um, you're, you're trying to say you're legit. You're trying to say you've got solutions. You're trying to say, and in this case, you want to say solutions to what? And you want to be able to somebody else who's done the work. So, and if people are saying, you know, we want more hands-on um, job training. So, what's the job training look like? I mean, if, they, if you could, if you could get a SWAT team of you know, of fifty people to spend five days building a house, and you could say, you know, if we trained 
500 people, that means in five days they could build 10 houses. Like, what does that look like? So, I mean, it just feels to me that there's, there's so much concern about under-leveraged skills. And if you're saying, we come in and do this work, we can also train the people so you don't have to have special training to do this. And then how much work has to be done in your workshop? Um, or can a workshop be set up where people say, okay, we want to build 500 houses over the next five years? I mean, do you, do you see that? I mean, something I like see it, that. But, there's the, but what's the limit to that? The, the idea is that currently as it is, it takes a high skill set to pull off one of these events if we use our model. Because you're talking about, uh, I mean, there's the design and build part, but also the organizational part. Uh, how do you pull it all together? So, so yes. Absolutely, it's skills training, but okay, so we had a, I did a first one month immersion program on a 3D printer. Uh, so basically training people to run the workshops, it didn't work. I had to let the people go. They stayed, stayed on for two months. So this was in September of just now, uh, mm -hmm. October, November, they, uh, we had them working with us. They actually were in California, two people uh, paying them 3000 a month, but um, couldn't teach them effectively enough to run run workshops. They had to let them go. People weren't signing up and stuff like that. So well, yeah, we found you've that got to, you've got to prove you have a demand for workshops before you before you before you build out the workshop. You've got to prove that you've got a model that you can build out. You have to yeah. have people say, "Yeah, we have a demand for the workshop. We want to do ten of these workshops. We've got a workforce. We have to train. We've got a we training. I mean, do you know what I mean? Because like, for you just to you know hire people to do that, right? In, and the other thing about the three D printers is that where's the real demand on that? Well, three D printers different. are doubling every year. It's pretty. It's. I mean, it's. Let's just say it's not bad. Like for example, the leading three D printer guy who sells kits, Prusa. They sell 8,000 kits per month. So, I mean, that market is really growing. So I, I, there's, a lot of, there's a lot there. I, I don't really question it. But the question is as execution. Like, and that's why right now we're getting our quality control up, up and high. So we're very reliable and all that. But it's just, yeah, it's, um, what you just said is exactly right. It's like, no, you can't just take people. You've got to have everything develop so that... Um, the business model and marketing it's all there already as opposed to we kind of went in it into it way too early and trying to train the people it, it just we couldn't get the marketing and, and the whole model going you've got, you've got to get a pull for it you've got to prove that people want what you've got yeah that people and that there's a demand for it. so wherever you think there's a demand that's what i'm thinking about like who can you partner with that could um that could provide demand where you say okay yeah. we've got we've got for community development, we've got some for housing building, we've got some, so anything like that. As soon as you prove a demand, then you can go in and say, yeah. you know, co create what should we do here. But for you to just throw things out and decide when to do it, and people don't sign up for the workshop, you end up like, like that just doesn't, it doesn't work. You, you spin your wheels too much, it doesn't make sense, it's not a good use of your time. And then you find yourself, you know, six months or 12 months into something and not any further ahead, and that's frustrating. You don't yeah. want to keep doing it. But check this out though. So on the housing, so we're getting emails like every week, a few emails, when can you build me a house? So it's actually not that problem with that. The problem with that is... But every, that, you, know, a, you know, a few emails like, when can you build me a house? It's like you've got to say, then you have to come back with them and you have to say, how many houses are in your neighborhood that need to be built? How many people, do you have a team of, do you have 50 people that want to be trained in this skill that they want to learn how to do something like that? Because that seems to me the real value of it, which is to say, if there's a training to get, was it 50 people or 20 people to build a house? The um, five did for the house is how plus fifty. We had fifty people during that. Okay, so you have fifty people. So do you have fifty people who want to be trained how to build a house? And if you do, um, then you know we're going to come and we're going to train and we're going to build you know the first three houses with you, something like that. And then you can, people are like, okay, I see this. We can get some funding, some public, some private funding to go ahead and do this. And then you see, and then you have got a case study. But it feels like you've got to do, you've got to do both of those things to show that. But you don't want to be just building, you know, a random three or four houses. A week or so that that just that doesn't scale. You have got to find some way that both you show that you can do this on a larger scale if you need to, but more importantly that you had a real success in building something that you've been able to work with a community or work with a group and build multiples and train multiple people. I think that then that sort of hits on both of your models. And if you think the housing is the best way to do it, that's one thing. If you think that you know you've got. You go into communities and people want to do 3D printing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, maybe it's like prison stuff. Maybe it's like the prison populations like we were teaching things like carpet installation. But you said, like, what if we did, you know, extreme building of housing? What if you did that for like, you know, the you know the, the um, community service? What if you know can people get yeah. 
people. Yeah. Um, and but check this out. You know, so what you're talking about with, okay, getting those 50 people, like when somebody contacts us, but the part, the part of it is that we are the ones that are getting the people to sign up. So we post up the announcement and random people show up to do that so that was that's part of the difficulty that model you know you need a guaranteed audience of people that can build so that's why we were thinking about churches i'm actually thinking okay partner with churches they have the audiences they would love to build a house for a poor person in their community or whatever and that would be our labor um labor model and then we that could that could work there so that's one thought i had lately because part of it is getting enough people to show up if you're going to provide that low cost because essentially you're kind of donating labor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's... What if, you, what, if it, what, if you, what if you did it where people are actually training? Like, you know, again, I'm going to keep thinking about the workforce development. Right. What if you would say, you know, um, when the company's going when the company's going out of business and they're, they're going to retrain the workforce. And what if you said, okay, it's going to cost you X number of dollars per right. person to be trained. We'll, we will train 100 people in your community to be able to build these houses so that instead of building it for $70, $70,000, you're able to build it for... 85 I, mean, I don't know what it is or some version of us of this multi right. multi multi so who, multi I mean, units i don't know but it feels like there's there's what you want to be able to do is do something it's you could look at the at the churches you could go to a place like the mormon church and it's like a good one because they're joint missionaries wherever they go they, uh -huh. everybody has to do missions so that's the, that's why i was thinking how to have to be honest again I, I i'm not sure but you've got to get somebody where they prove that there's a demand and you can build more than one house in one place. More than one. So you're saying key is more than one house in one place. I think the key is to use that same workforce over and over again. So if you say we went in and did this workshop and a year later, these same 50 people that we trained, we actually trained a hundred people and they have built 10 houses in this area. We did that. That's powerful. So the same people. So you're saying forget about the model where where we have uh, kind of like the wild crowds appearing, because that's that's going to be well, super hard to get the people. Well, I guess I guess the piece about that is then you're trying to you know you're trying to recruit 50 people each time you're trying to do it. I'm saying if you've got a model and you can actually train people to build a house, then why not use those people, the same people, to train yeah. them to basically be okay. workers? So so would you say on that that model? So are you saying? these people are people we hire or is it like some organization no, you're, not you're not hiring anybody you're not hiring a soul you cannot hire a soul you're saying okay um the akron ohio has got a an economic development budget that is about workforce training and economic development and they're mm -hmm. trying because they've got a dropout rate this is all bullshit i mean just saying it. i don't know mm -hmm. they've got a dropout rate of of 50 percent in high school Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and they don't want to be stuck with being a yeah. people who have even to high school. And you go to them and you say, "Okay, we've got something. If you've got, you know, how many how many kids are dropping out, we can train them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't know what our rate will be like, but we can certainly try it. And it's better. And we can get of these, you know, we we if you've got fifty dropouts between, and then who dropped out last year. So let's say we've got a hundred kids for the last five years who are pretty unemployable." Um, and let's say we will train them and we can build X number of houses over X number of days. Um, and you pay for them to be trained and you pay whatever minimum wage or whatever kind of stipend you want to do. And we will do the training. You pay us to do the training. Um, and we can also get, do you know what I mean? It's like some way, because there's such a huge need right now for skill building and training. Um, and it happens in different kinds of, you know, the military does that stuff too, but the, um, that's a little tricky right now just because of, we're still at war. Um, so, uh, but it, it, you know, and, it, and, and there are, you know, community service things. So you've got to do, if you're 300, you're sentenced because you're young at first time offender to 500 hours of community service. So if you've got to do 500 hours of community service, what better thing than learn how to build a house? How, who actually does the actual enterprise of then finding the clients and building houses? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think, I, no, I, I mean, I think, I think they've got it. You know, that's, that's, that would be, so let's just say you got that. So my friend, um, she used to be the head of, of the sort of, um, uh, uh, the whole penal system in Missouri. But let's just say she's doing that now in, in, in 
Connecticut, and let's just say you said, okay, what happens when people get community service? The individual community says, okay, you know, you have to like take tickets of this, or you have to clean up the bathrooms. I mean, I don't know what it is, but they have this, and it's a, you know, it's a pretty common scenario. And you've got to do community service. Let's watch so that you say, here's an opportunity where they will actually not only do this work, but they will develop a skill. And you say to that same community, do you, you know, who in your community needs to do this? People have lost the fires, other you know, groups that are working with people in the media. I and mean, I don't know what that looks like, but I'm, again, right. I'm trying to think of where you get a group of people who are both um, in need and who are, um, who, yeah. who uh, they, they, they got access to capacity of people. Because right. you don't want to be with people over and over again. If you can get someone, the first time you build a house is one thing, the second time you build it, the better, the third time you build it, the fourth time you build it, the fifth time they can teach other people how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. But then you are you kind of like the real question is, okay, who is the entrepreneur in that scheme? Because that's the missing part. Like, okay, who's going to hire these people or are they going to be the ones that are actually going to go out into the community and, and start it themselves? They're not going to be hired. Things? They're not going to be hired. You have to work off an install base. That's something about community service. People that have an obligation to work. Okay. But are you saying that that's our labor force? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. As a, as a thought experiment, yeah, uh -huh. that is, labor force. And then the same way you'd be training to do that. So you were brought in, uh -huh. you were you're brought in, and you're saying, we're doing the training. And it's going to cost you X number of, you know, thousand dollars to do the training, and we'll do the training, and we'll do the first two houses. And then from there on in, you identify somebody within the group you think is good, and go on, and they can do it. But I'm just trying to think of how you start something yeah, in a community go. that right. solves a problem. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Because right now, nothing you're doing is solving a problem. Or let's yeah. just say, the way you're doing it isn't solving an existing problem. So where are problems? There's problems around community service. There's problems around sort of, sort of citizen engagement. There's obviously big problems around housing. There's, you know, so, so you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure where to take it and what to do with it. But it feels to me like you've got to look for places where there are where there is unused capacity, or there's a pretty course. So look at, like, is there an association of maker spaces? And if there are, is there any, you know, is there a way of, like, uh, it's got a maker space in um, Detroit, in Mr. Martin Detroit. I've got, you know, X number. Or even if you've got, like, it's a tech shop, what's the one, one of the ones that, I don't know if it's still going, it may not have survived, but right. they, have, um, they have massive number of subscribers. You go to tech. You go to tech shop and you say you got people who are making stuff. We're running a program. You know we're going to do it with happy. I don't know what you know where you go, but you say okay. You people are all maker people. You sign up. You're committed over the next year to build two houses, which means it's ten days time. Which and again, I think the first time you get someone trained, they build one house one time, but then they the second one they're better at it, and then you know you, you could then you begin to build a database of people who've done this before or done this once or twice or three times before. Um, and that's helpful too. So you can begin to develop some real skills and see who, who who's valuable in that. You just gotta you gotta get away from. Um, and even, let's just say you've got to build stronger on the sort of accreting of the uh -huh. it's hiring somebody into run workshops you get paid for. You have to be able to turn around and show something you've really done that you've done like in more than once or more than twice. That you're like, okay, we did this in this community. We did this in this community. We did this. It all ladders up to. A particular area you've looked at, like the house building. Okay, so you're saying like basically the whole, whole deal. Your main point there is okay. The labor model is a real gap in our program. Yep, the labor model is a gap in your program, and there's a real need for people who are like we've got excess capacity in terms of labor and unskilled labor. Like, what do you do besides work at McDonald's if you don't right. have a college? If you don't have a high school education, then what do you do? Okay, but then that, it's that hard. kind of means that we are running the show in terms of, okay, organizing the bills and so forth. So we are the employer at that point. I or the people no, that we were trained. Employer. No, you're not the, you can ever be in the place of employer. You're the architects. You're architecting a system. You already have a system. You're architecting it. So you say, this is the system that we have. And you, you know, this county that's trying to do this, look at this bigger problem. You've got a series of nonprofits that you work with. You have a sister series of organizations. You've got you know, a labor force, whether it's, it's community service labor or you've got, you know, mm -hmm. um, a high school drop -off. You've got some way. So you have to do the recruiting of the people, you meaning not, not open source ecology, but whoever you're partnering with in a town, for example. Um, and then you also get to decide who you're going to be a building for. 
New building one house, you could, you know, if it's in five days, could you do a multifamily dwelling in, you know, could you do one of those in, in 10 days? So it could be four families. Again, I don't know, or three generations of a family, or something like that. But um, it feels to me like you and you are architect and assistant say, okay, so this is the system and this is what it looks like and these are the people that you need and we will help you walk through this thing and people commit to doing it at least twice so that they get better and better at it and they can begin to eventually take it off themselves. So who's on this, so who in this model, who do you see as the person being on a side there, person ordering materials, running the crews? Who's that going to be? Um, I don't know because I don't know what's involved in that. How turnkey is that? How turnkey can you make that? And how much experience does someone have to have to have done it? Yeah, that's that's the missing link. The turnkey part is the missing link. So the R and D part is to do that extensive documentation, improving out of the systems. That's what's missing, and that's the part that takes the time. So yeah, we can go out to these people and and do that. But w what's our product? And without that streamline level of streamlining, we we are not there yet. That's that's the point. So but you've done how many times have you done the house? Just once. Oh, uh, that CD Co home we did once. We did a number of other builds that were smaller. Okay. Like three other builds that were smaller. Um, you, you know, again, I don't. It, yeah. well, it seems to me, it seems to me, you have to find somebody who wants to play with you to do this. Who, yeah. who are you going to partner with? It? And then you say, you know, we'll invest on our side, and then you invest on your side, and it's a, you know, it's it's twenty five thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars for the or sixty thousand dollars for the. Wow. And then we'll do the architect system with you, we'll create it in documentation. I mean, you know, I don't know what that costs to do it, but it feels to me like somebody we replicate and you say, you know, we can train, and then by the end of five years, you've got 500 trained builders in your town that can either do this work or they can take that elsewhere because they build these kinds of houses. And you can imagine having a network around the country, people saying, okay, we want to build, we want to do an extreme deal and we need 10 people who've done this six times before and where then you've got a database of people that mm -hmm. have been that have been trained in doing this that are willing to go and and maybe yep. they, that they do get paid to do it and they do get their paid you know and maybe that that you know 50 people are paid they're paid two thousand dollars for the week or a thousand dollars for the week and um and then that's fifty thousand dollars on top of what you're be doing but th i don't know there's something but if you said gee we're paying we're paying some of the people but you know say let's say like a thousand bucks a week which is that's actually good money for someone. Um, unskilled labor, you might, but I mean, again, I don't know. Let's just so, but at that point, you say, so the cost of building the house uh, along with the materials is $50,000 on top of the 70 that you said, but it still puts you in like 120 for a totally built house. I, I don't know, but there's something that, that, you should be able to do and not just have people come together because if you're really good, they built someone a house, but really learning how to do it and learning what. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's saying, um, Basically, like looking from the outside, you say, "Okay, so let me show you this picture, um, just to show you what the deal looks like." Um, um, You're showing, what are you showing me? Okay, take a look at uh, the chat box there. So that picture, you're saying that, forget about it. So those 50 people, they can't be signing up for a workshop. That has to be some guaranteed pool somewhere. And that's, you know. That's I think they can do it, but here's my deal. I think that um, you can do that. But I think what you want to say is, who do you people want to go do this again and again and again? That's what you're trying to do. So if mm -hmm. you could get a conversion rate of 10%, which means you've got 50 people doing this, and five of them would say, I really want to go ahead and be the open source building and take it to my community or mm -hmm. take it someplace, and then they take that. Um, and you know, But it, it feels to me like every time you do this one thing, which looks great, this Open Building Institute, that's terrific. And then you have to do it all over again with the next group of people. So what if those people became your core construction group? Mm -hmm. Okay. That they were training people around. They were training people around the around the um, the country to do the kind of work. Yeah. Because again, the first one is the hardest. And you do one. And so what if you do? What if you do? What if you've done ten? 
and the learnings of the 10, because otherwise you're doing all that stuff yourself. And it's one of the challenges you've always had, which is like you've got to build out the whole documentation. What if you just said, we don't have to do that? What if you said, we're going to learn as we go. We'll videotape all these things. We'll learn the shortcuts. We'll debrief after every single uh-huh. building. And in, and in one year, we will have built 10 or 12 different structures and we'll know what works and what the hacks are and how we can do it and how many people it really takes and um, what's the differential between you know using people for the first time versus using people for the fourth time how much more efficient are they I don't know if they are they're not or can you get rid of those efficiencies and have those exact same efficiencies if you're not um, 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 if, if you are um, uh, using I mean, I don't know what the are someone having that once or twice or three times or four times. I mean, I don't know how much easier or better it gets. But that kind of stuff, I have no idea. But it's got to be, there's got to be a whole lot of sort of a big jump of efficiency from one to two and then probably from two to five, there's another one. But I don't know what those, I don't know what those numbers look like. Yeah. Well, the, the, that's actually, a, I think that's kind of the opposite. The idea is that if you have the design, which is optimized for this parallel build, that's the critical part. The point is that if you have that, anyone can ag- execute it in, in rapid time. But they have to, the leader of that crew, they have to have good skill. They have to be aware. They're the, they're the architect. But so how many, how, how, many, how many builds do they have to do to become to develop good skills? What does that look like? Five houses? Ten houses? Two houses? What does it mean? Going through the cycle. How many times does someone have to go say, through the cycle to be good? I would say we need to go through go through four builds and like three months of training like studying it that would be like well, but you're, someone who's well, decent but if you're but he, but if you're doing four builds aren't you doing sort of on the job training when you're doing the builds too yeah absolutely but the question still remains like who is the the where is the business like it's very easy for anybody to go into that setting and actually build the house they could do it but the, but the real deal is getting a client going through codes, uh, logistics, organizing the event. There's a whole deal around that. That's, that's the part that's difficult. That's where you need like pretty sharp people local. to do that. Like that's why partner. everybody does this. It's too yeah. hard. That's where you need local partners. That's where you need local partners. Yeah. I think you, you know, if you, you to go into a place cold, it just doesn't make sense. That doesn't scale. You need mm-hmm. local partners who are going to come in and they're going to, they're going to do the, um, they're going to make sure all that stuff happens. I mean, if you've got a, you've got a local government, they make all those things happen more quickly or theoretically they should. So you've got, they supply an expediter who makes that stuff happen in a week. I mean, I don't know that there's expediters that live everywhere that are going through all the red tape of what you're talking about, which is much better than you trying to, you know, bring one of your people and you go and whatever. Mm-hmm. But that's why you want the local piece. And that's why you need to do some sort of partnership with, where there's a public yeah. piece to it as well. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, just focus on the uh, local partner model. So that part is... I think you have to focus on the local partner model because then you can say, okay, you know, it's the training is going to be one, it's going to be four houses. And so, you know, theoretically, you could compress that and that could be a six-month training, which is theoretically you could do four houses and, and three months of training in six months, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Or maybe, theoretically, maybe you could even do it in four months because you could, you know, or five months. You could say... Three months training in between while you're building the houses. And then you've got the documentation yep. and the training and, you know, and that's going to cost you what? But as I said, but you've got to have a local partner to do all that heavy lifting because otherwise someone's got to do that. And that can be part of the training, which is to say, you know, you've got, you've got, you know, local partners that are doing showing how this stuff happens and how it happens quickly and where you want to go and who the partners are, you know, just, but I think, I think you've got to focus on a place because if you've got to be, you're doing the marketing costs of trying to, get local communities to, to buy in. And then you've got a completely unskilled workforce um, that is doing it just because they think it's cool as opposed to because they're obliged to in some way as well as thinking about the community service angle because they have to. By law, otherwise, you know, they end up in jail. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a different kind of workforce. And I don't know if work at all. But it's thinking about some sort of captive workforce that is under, yeah. uh, underemployed. Yeah, yeah. But that the church audience is also qualifying that, that kind of... Uh setting up which I as far as the captive labor force i mean churches i mean they have their seems like that could be it well it could be then you've got to go you know find it find a church that's interested enough in doing it and it's committed to building four houses and committed to there's people in who want to learn about that yeah 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 it could be anyone yeah. it could be anyone like yeah but but yeah like the prison populations yes 
absolutely churches. I think the prison, the prison part, and I also think the community service, the looking the social, and looking at the you know, judicial system locally, and how it go locally mm-hmm. to you know, wherever you just say, like, um, how do you guys like what happens? With, what happens with with the between the, the dropout rate in the schools and the um, uh, and the community mm-hmm. service sentences? What are you doing with those people? Mm-hmm. Do you want to do this? Do you want to do something more positive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. That sounds good. Sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's you know, a little research on sort of how that stuff is done, or I would just, you know, start talking to people, go local and find out what happens of it. You know, what's the closest big city to where you are? Kansas City. Okay. How far is Kansas City? One hour. There's St. Joe, which is 100,000 people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So go to St. Joe. Yeah. See what's happening. And is it, is the you know, is there much economic activity in St. Joe? Yeah, it's pretty decent. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you know. See, see what's close, and see, see how they're dealing with some of these things, and see what it sounds like. You know, you just, and I just don't know. But you can't, um, you can't be there doing all the groundwork for every single house. You can't do that. That's why you need partners. Mm-hmm, and I, mm-hmm. I think working with partners in some way, and it may be that it's a disaster, and you don't want to do it. And I don't. I mean, you, know, you have to try it to see. But I think you can't be trying to recruit workers all the time. And you can look at the you can look at churches and churches are an interesting idea if they have to ladder up to some larger organization because others are this is really nice, we're gonna build one house a year. Which is okay. I mean one house a year is fine. But I think that's not gonna get you the accelerated model to see if this is a decent model that works. Right. And it, you know, and um and you know, so it, it, it that was what I was wondering about if the habitat or or some version of that where you're where you're excelling and I don't know what's happening in border housing and things like that. I'm sure you're using temporary housing and metro and this kind of thing. But, but um, yeah, that's, that's the best that I can think of at the, at the moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So do you see, like, like, for example, how we did it? You know, it took us, like, we advertised the, the house three months ahead of time. A bunch of people showed up. Actually, some people showed up through it, through the Kickstarter that we did on it. But, okay, mm-hmm. we did three months, and then we had the event. So you, you wouldn't see this as feasible as, okay, there's, say there's another March in Katerina organizing, like, can we train the March in Katerinas to organize it and, and do it, like, every three months? Or that's too little? Say. Well, you can do that, but that, that's not anything I'm going to invest in. That's not anything anyone's going to invest in. Because it doesn't, it's just you guys doing something and you're building one thing. It's not getting a whole group of people who are trained over and over. The replicability is the stuff that you want. Right, right. But what about, so so that kind of goes back to the previous discussion of, okay, the specific model where we now get an immersion program, say at our facility, we take like 40 people and then do that. That's that's how we train our armies. That's that's kind of how we've been thinking about it. I think it is, but do people want to come and spend a month with you? And if so, how much are they willing to pay to do it? That's the hard thing because you're, you've got people have got to come to you and they've got to pay to do it. What I'm saying is you take your model to an installed base of labor that someone's trying to figure out what the hell we do with these people, then you've got a totally different mm-hmm. flip dynamic, a totally different dynamic. Okay. It just feels like the model that you've got is going to be one thing at a time for a year, and it's you and Katarina, and that's fine. It's just that you can't get any traction there and say, you know, so then make sure you build four houses, right? Which is okay, and you've got, you know, and, you know, and there's another hundred, there's two hundred people who build a house. So you don't think, um, okay, say, say we've we've got the model worked out. So say Katarina and I could execute a house, and it's perfect. The, the result is awesome. Um, you you think that? Um, to get people to sign up and pay for that, like for example, if we say, okay, pay pay for training, however it is, 10k, mm-hmm. we'll hire you after that. So you you don't think we'll we'll get people if there's well, like a hiring, job? What do you what do you what are you hiring? Are you going to become a construction company? I don't think you want to be a construction company, do you? Well, it's um. Why are you hiring people to become a construction? I that feels to me like totally different. You want to be the architects of something. You don't well, want no, to be no, no. We're training. We're not. We demonstrate the model. We train the people who and are. They go they've got to go and they've got to go. They've got to go recruit fifty people again to do their piece. That's a, that's a tough model. It just feels very difficult to me. I know what you're saying. You've got like a multi-level marketing model, and this is huge incentives for people to um, to do this model. They're not going to be out training people. And again, you build the house. Would you rather have your house built by 
um, someone who's building it for the first time? Or would you have it with somebody who's done it six or seven or eight or nine or ten times before? Well, I mean, uh, the, the answer to that is depends on the result, that's the proven result from that model, right? Like if, if the model is working, people say, hey, these people got, you know, they use this service, they got a good house, I'm going to do that mm -hmm. too. But again, no? I, think that, I, think, I think you're talking about training people for a kind of a, I mean, I don't know. If you think you can do it, maybe that you're, so you're tra basically talking about training at construction team. So that people can go out and then build their own construction companies. Is that what you're talking about? You got to give me but a corollary. It's not really a construction team. We're training the organizers because the rest of it is the, the way I, I would see it in my mind is we're training the Marchins and Katarinas who then network with the partners, network with the church or prison or whatever. We have to, like right now, we don't have the labor model figured out, but we figured that out. Uh, so probably we have to do a couple of builds to prove out some labor models and stuff. But we train people for that product. So we're training the uh, architects of that system who are running those operations in different locations. Now, initially, I would prefer we just hire them as they learn the ropes more on, like, more on organizing. But what are you hiring them to do? What are you hiring them to do? That's what I don't understand. To, so that Marchin and Katarina are not running those, doing all the legwork on organizing those events. They're doing all the work. So it could be part of their training. So they're getting. So we're not a construction company. We're a training company. But again, people will pay money for something. A lot of money, which you're talking about, ten thousand dollars pop. If they know that they're going to be able to make five x that time, like people are doing the coding boot camps for like two to six thousand dollars for three months, um, with the promise that they're going to get a job for fifty thousand dollars plus. Oh yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. We would pay so market rate. But, but no, but the point is, is that you're, so you're training the trainers, but people don't, and if you don't, um, if you don't have a demand for this kind of build, which you haven't been able to prove yet, then why are people going to come and spend 10 grand? Right, to right, right. But that's, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like the first thing is we have to prove out that model that, okay, uh, probably that myself and, you know, Katarina were showing, okay, bam, we got an event successful so, so we have to we have to show that we haven't shown the replicability of that like the yeah and i look at some place where you've got where you've got a captive labor force try to do that first yeah because you yeah, can yeah. say and then you can get a place where you're like okay we built 10 houses and we have trained 500 people that's a nice thing to say that's and you're not hiring you don't, you're not paying anybody you're not hiring anybody. i want to be able to do things where you're going to pay um, and then when you show me, you've got a model where this really takes off in some way, and I don't know if it does, or I don't know about modifications, but I don't want you spend too much time in terms of like, of like spending all the time in the model, because it may be that there's no model for single houses, for single family. It may be that the whole thing is about some sort of communal or a multifamily that you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And until you can show that and know that, and that's doing it a bunch of different times and saying, well, yeah, this is really nice, but if I'm going to build a house, I don't really want to do it this way. Or someone says, I'm going to build a house. It really has to, you know, it's got a house for families. So, I mean, there's different things you have to look at. I just, I just feel like right now you've got a hunch about something that's going to work. And then you're talking about hiring people to do something that you haven't proven out. I think that's no, a problem. Yeah, we can't do that. Yeah, there's, there's some uh, proofs of concept that need to happen before that. But the question is more like the direction, like how to approach it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I feel like what you need to do is look at, the, for this, for the model as we're looking at stuff right now, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to um, hop off because we've got a meeting in about. We, it's gonna yeah, start in about yeah. two minutes. Um, yeah. You've got to look at what can I do. Where is where is the install base that will help? So there's an install base either like who can I get for labor that we can use over and over again? Yep. Who can I get with a demand for housing of some sort? Maybe not these houses, but some variation. Where is there big housing demand? Like captive demand for housing. That has got to be under market cost in some way. Where is there huge demand for skill development? So try to look at those mm -hmm. three areas and see what you can come up with. Um, and then, you know, follow each one of them because otherwise you're marketing for all three and that's a disaster. You're marketing mm -hmm. for, you know, for recruiting for talent. You're marketing for recruiting people who want to buy and do want to build a house like this at this cost. Um, and then you're recruiting for, you know, how you can replicate it enough times. You won't just say, we've done it once and we've done it twice. But like, you know, this year we did it 10 times and next year we're doing it 25 times. And, you know, and we're doing some sort of permanent 
I think I think the permanent piece is important because people are, especially as we move more and more towards the future of work, there's more people like, what skills can I have that will not make me obsolete? Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's another thing too. Like, how do we make this what we're doing uh, not obsolete? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. That seems to be the best I can think of at the moment. So. Yeah. 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 I applaud your incredible persistence. Yeah, no, I mean, it boils down to, okay, we got to do a, write down a business model that works. I mean, we got to develop that ourselves and then teach it. But yeah. But I, th- I think you need to test a bunch of different models. Yeah, yeah. But be thinking about testing the models where, where you're struggling with, with, um, um, with how you're funding it, because you're not going to get any, any kind of funding without being able to have... Um, uh, something showing you replicating it, and then yeah. showing all of the all of the metrics of what's happened out of it. So, some you know what you can build, how many you can build, how many people are trained, how many people converted from, you know, the first to the second or the third to the fourth. How many of them then converted to some sort of management or leadership right. thing when they could be the entrepreneur in it. Those are the kind of metrics I think that get people who are looking for community development or workforce development excited. Yep. Yep. Okay. That sounds great. Um, thank you, Sunny. Okay, great. Good to talk to you. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank okay. you. Okay. Take care. Well, I'll give my love to Katerina, will you? Okay. Thanks, okay, Sunny. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.